Hey guys, today I'll show you a full guide on how to install the RPCS3 emulator on Steam Deck and how to add games to it. This emulator has come a long way and nowadays you can run tons of games on it. All the necessary links you will need are in the video description. Let's get started. First, we'll start by downloading Emudeck. Emudeck is a tool that brings together multiple emulators. It has several useful features and it's good idea to have it. Especially if you plan to try more emulators in the future like Duckstation, PC SX2 and others. It helps keep everything organized. Go to the Emudeck website. In the download section at the bottom, you'll see a version made specially for Steam OS. Download it and install it. Make sure to write down the Emudeck installation path burning setup. You will need it later. If you want everything to match what I am showing here, install Emudeck directly on the SD card. Now, we'll download the emulator itself. If you search for RPC3 in Discover, you will find it there too, but we are not going to use the Discover version instead. We'll download the official Linux version from the RPC3 website. The reason why the website version is better is because it receives regular updates. These updates are important to keep games running as smoothly as possible. The version from Discover doesn't update automatically and if you want to update it, you'd have to do it manually through the terminal. After the installation is complete, when I now launch RPCS3, you can see it automatically shows and updates windows. And that's the point. If you open the version from Discover, you will notice it doesn't offer any updates prompt. That's not ideal, because RPCS3 is developing very fast. It's an open source project with an active community of developers. Every day someone might fix a bug, improve performance, increase compatibility with a specific game, optimize graphic or controls, and that's why updates are frequent. Not always huge, but the project is constantly evolving. To finish the setup and make the emulator work, we will need the PS3 firmware. It's a quick install file, nothing complicated. Every emulator needs some kind of extra files like BIOS or firmware. And RPCS3 is no different. This file has to be downloaded separately because the firmware is owned by Sony. RPCS3 can't legally include it with the emulator, so the user must download it manually through the official Sony website to keep everything legal. So, open your browser and search for the PS3 firmware. The link is in the video description like everything else. You'll land on the main page where the file is a bit hidden. Now, you'll see the download link. It's possible that your browser might block the download. It. Just allow it. Don't worry, this is an official PlayStation website and the file is completely safe. Now open the emulator and the top click on file, then choose install firmware. Find the file you downloaded and start the installation. And that's it. The emulator is now fully ready for use. I recommended keeping the PS3 firmware in your downloaded folder. Sometimes after an update you might need to install it again. Now let's take a look at how to add games. To make file handling easier, I moved over to my PC. There are two ways to add games to the emulator. One is installing a PKG file, which is the official PS3 game format. And the order is by using ISO files. I'll show you the ISO method, because it's easier and also safer. You don't have to install anything, which means there are less risk of viruses. And first it's important to say that emulation itself is legal. However, downloading ISO files is not legal. That's why I won't show you any downloaded website here. The correct way is to buy the game legally and then modify your own game files for the use the emulator. Of course. Many PS3 games are no longer available today, some of these games are even 20 years old, they are not sold anymore or you might only find them on eBay for crazy prices. In those cases, emulation is the only way to keep these games alive and stop them from disappearing forever. So here I have a game called Haze, as an example, it was a PS3 exclusive, it was a flop, the game isn't being sold anymore and the studio no longer exists. When you extract the archive, you'll see an ISO file. This is the format you need, just in case you accidentally come across a certain game website. 
RPCS3 can't read a game in this format directly, so we need to do the following. Create a new folder with the name of the game, move the ISO file into that folder, then extract the ISO using WinRAR or 7-zip, and once it's extracted, you can delete the ISO file, now we have a fully emulatable game folder. You can then transfer into your Steam Deck using a portable drive. In my case, I'm using an external hard drive. To connect a portable drive to the Steam Deck, you'll need a USB-C to USB 3.0 OTG adapter. They are cheap, you can get one for 2 euros and it works great. And now select your game folder and choose copy. Don't use cut because the Steam Deck can sometimes freeze and I've already lost files during transfer this way. Now, we need to find the emulator folder called emulation. You'll recognize it by the ROMs subfolder inside, which contains many folders for different emulators and consoles, playstations, handhelds and more. This is one of the reasons why Emudec is great, it keeps your games organized. In my case, I have Emudec installed on my SD card, so my path is something like primary emulation ROMs. If you installed it to do internal storage, the folder will be somewhere else, but it's not hard to find. Inside the ROMs folder, find the PS3 folder, since we are working with the PS3 emulator. Now, paste your game folder into PS3 directory. Open the RPCS3 emulator and we need to fire our game. At the top click boot game and navigate to folder where you placed it. One downside of the Linux version is that it doesn't show the SD card by default. It's hidden, but don't worry, here's the exact path to your SD card. If you have your ROMs on the SD card like I do, and if you have Emudec installed on internal storage, the path should look something like this. But keep in mind, it might be slightly different for each user, depending on Emudec version and your Steam OS version. Now, we can see that our game is at and ready to launch. When emulating games, we always start in desktop mode, where we first set the game up and only then we add it to gaming mode. First, I'll show you how it runs in gaming mode and then we go over some of detailed settings. But first, the most important setting before testing any game is quickly setting up the gamepad. Hover your mouse over the game. If you don't have a mouse, use the touchpad and press R2. Then select create custom gamepad configuration. At the top, under player 1, go to handlers and switch from Kbora to NDEV. Then click save. NDEV is a native Linux driver that works great with the Steam Deck controls and it's perfect for most emulated games. Now launch the game in the emulator. It's a good idea to run it in desktop mode first, once it starts you can close it. Next open Steam and click add the unknown Steam game and add the RPCS3 emulator. If you can find it in uh, the list, locate the emulator app manually, right click it, choose create a desktop shortcut and then it should show up in Steam. I'll also show you how to add games to your library using Emudec. But this method doesn't work for me anymore, it used to work before. But after a center update, the app broke for me and for others too, based on what I've read. Emudec changed its interface with almost every update, so everyone ends up having a slightly different version of the app that makes it harder to follow tutorials, but maybe you'll be lucky and it'll work for you. Open the Emudec app on your desktop and click on Steam ROM Manager. Here, you can check the consoles you are emulating. Leave the others unchecked so your library doesn't get messy. Then click add games. Then click parts and now you should see games from all your emulators. After that, if you click save to Steam, your games should appear in gaming mode, but like I said, this method doesn't work for me anymore, it used to. I don't know what happened, but a lot of people are having issue with Emudec. If you know how to fix it, let me know in the comments. Anyway, if you are one of the lucky few and your game show up in library, great, one cool thing you can do here is change the artwork of your game. A lot of people skip this, but I think that's a shame, because look how beautiful some of these artwork are. For example, artworks of Silent Hill 1 is absolutely amazing. Now, go back to gaming mode and in your library find the non-steam tab. Here. 
You should see all your enabled emulators and also games from them. Pau, I don't see mine because my emu deck is broken and doesn't show them anymore. But that's okay, just find the RPCS3 emulator here, launch it and use the play button inside to start your game and it will run in gaming mode. When I am testing a game for the first time and don't know how it will run, I first switch my gamepad to NDEV, launch the game in desktop mode, then quickly switch to gaming mode to test it based on how it runs. I adjust the setting later in the configuration menu back in desktop mode. So this is the basics of emulation. Now I'd like to show you how to tweak specific settings in the emulator if you want to customize your game individually. If this feels too complex or you don't want to spend time on it, no worries. You can skip this part and go straight to my RPC Street Games configuration setting playlist where I've got a bunch of videos showing how to set up specific games in emulator. I'll keep adding more over time. For many of the games I cover, there's no other tutorial on how to set them up for Steam Deck, so don't forget to save the playlist and subscribe. That way you'll have to it ready next time you want to emulate a game. Ok, let's switch to desktop mode and open the RPCS3 emulator. Some games, if they are popular enough, might have patches. So at the start of emulation any game, I recommend clicking on manage game patches. If there's a new patch for your game, a windows will pop up asking if you want to update. Click yes, then just hit apply and save and you are done. Some games like the very popular Demon Souls have advanced patch options. You can check boxes like unlock FPS or disable motion blur. For Steam Deck, I don't recommend checking expect ratio unless you want to mess up your resolution. I did that in one video and it was kind of fail. I already showed how to create a custom gamepad layout. Personally, I always choose NDEV, the Linux driver. It works great on the Steam Deck and I don't have to tweak anything. Of course, you can assign button however you like. If you connect your Steam Deck to a TV via a dock and want to play with the DualShock, you can select it here. Some if you have a cable bar for Steam Deck, just pick what suits you. Click on custom gamepad configuration and this is where you set up the internal controls for each game individually. A lot of things about game setup can be found online. I recommend starting with the RPCS3 wiki, link in the video description. It lists tons of games with recommended configuration settings, resolution, patches, info on whether the game is playable at all and much more. Of course, not all games are listed there. You can also check the RPCS3 forum where people share tips, Reddit is another good place and the easiest way just ask ChatGPT to find the best setting for you. And of course there are also YouTube videos, but especially for Steam Deck there are fewer of them, some of them you can find on my channel. To wrap up, I'll show you few case settings in the emulator for games. There's a lot of here, so I won't go through everything. Just a quick overview of the most commonly used ones, the ones that matter 90% of the time. Let's start with the first tab, CPU. On the left, the two most important sections are PPU decoder and SPU decoder. Very simple, PPU is the main CPU decoder, how instructions are emulated. LLVM is faster and better for performance and loading. Interpreter is slower but more accurate, good for debugging and unstable games. SPU handlers, secondary processors that manage things like physics and sound. ASMJIT, very fast at compiling, LLVM, slower to load but faster during gameplay. In SPU, you are something work with SPU block size. This sets how large the blocks are that get complete at once. Smaller blocks are better compatibility but worse performance. Larger blocks better performance but can cause bugs or instability in games. An important part of the emulator is the GPU tab. The first setting, render, controls how the game is graphically rendered. In 90% of cases, Vulkan is used, it's the fastest and recommended for most games. OpenGL, slower but sometimes more stable on older GPUs. On the Steam Deck, it's uh, almost never used, only in very rare cases for specific games. 
frame limit says to FPS cap for a game. Many PS3 games were designed for 30 FPS. Some titles like Silent Hill Downpour or Demon Souls can be unlocked to higher FPS, but it may cause worse stability. This section mostly deals with details like anisotropic filter, which improves texture, sharpness and angles. Another somewhat useful option is shader quality, high, best visuals, more demanding, low, medium, faster but worse graphics. Anyway, the main graphics setting is up here. Resolution. First you set the basic pixel resolution and just below that is resolution scale. Resolution scale. Sharpens the image at your screen's resolution. Meaning some games can look better than the original. As you probably know, many PS3 games weren't very sharp to being with. It's a pretty good feature, but it does affect performance. I recommend that experimenting try 150%, but going higher will likely drop your FPS. The last important setting is bright color buffers. Usually, check it for most games to render effects or visual correctly. Sometimes it's turned off, but that's rare. Occasionally, you might also check asynchronous texture streaming, which preload textures in the background to improve FPS, but bright color buffers plays the bigger role overall. These few settings affect 90% of how the game behaves. All other options are just details, sometimes useful or even necessary, but most of the time, you'll be thinking just this. If you heard of the Pareto principle, where 80% of results come from 20% of causes, it fits perfectly here, about 90% of game performance really comes from these key 20% of settings. Ok, if you made it this far, congrats, you are a very patient person, I really appreciate a like or subscribe, in the description you'll find all the important links and info. I'll also try to add timestamps for each section in case you want to come back later. I'm glad if you learned something today and definitely check out more content on my channel.